Tell us what you think. In person, over the phone, online. Watch and hear yourself on TV. You tell us, we air it. This is The Local Live. Good evening, I'm Marcella Milder and welcome to The Local Live. As every Thursday, we're here to bring you the latest news in the Larchmont and Mamarina communities. Let's take a look at what we have coming up tonight. We have Senator George Latimer in the studio to talk about what's happening in Albany. He'll answer your questions and concerns live tonight in our weekly roundtable. What's going on with the sewage system in our community? Stay tuned. If you live in the town of Mamarinic, your next water bill might increase. More details in a bit. Didn't make it to the block party on Mamarinic Avenue? Our own Shayla Navarro has you covered. The local live had the chance to visit Maid, the new arts and crafts store in Mamarinic. Kat Galliano has a scoop. And meet Loretta, our pup of the week. The Westchester County Sewer Act Intermunicipal Agreement was the highlight of this week's Village of Larchmont board meeting. The town of Marinick, which is one of the members of the New Rochelle Sanitary District, has been identified as having a large amount of inflow and infiltration from stormwater that flows into the sanitary sewer. As a result, overflow retention facilities were built. However, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation now wants to close the facility behind Flint Park due to the untreated sewage water being pumped into the Long Island Sound. The agreement that the board discussed aims to eliminate the flow of stormwater into the sewer, which was further explained by Mayor Ann McAndrews. Um, so we have to find out a way to keep the, all the rainwater from getting into the sewage system because we have two different systems. We have a stormwater system and we have a sewage system. And uh, they are the, uh, two separate systems. We have to keep the rain in the stormwater system and out of the sewage system. The ways we do it are <coughs> preventing uh, uh, illegal stormwater hookups, which all the evidence strike, uh, points to being the major culprit here. And number two, lining the pipes to prevent the water from that's around the pipe and given a high water table, etc. And because the system is basically pumped, it creates a vacuum which basically sucks the water from around any any fissures in the in the in the pipe into into the system. And uh, there are various ways of taking care of that problem: televising the lines, uh, having uh, lining them, much the way that we did uh, over 10 years ago. Uh, but we simply have to zero in on a system to do it. The board agreed to follow the county's initiative. We will continue to follow the progress of the Sewer Act's implementation. In other news, we received an update on the construction on Palmer Avenue. The Palmer Avenue streetscape is going great, according to Mayor Ann McAndrews. The project is fully expected to be fully finished by the end of October. If you want to watch the full meeting, visit www.lmctv.org and search for videos. And now we have some news from yesterday's Town of Maranix Municipal Meeting. A 12% water tax increase was approved in the town. Mamaroneck receives its water from Westchester's Joint Water Works, who increase their rates yearly. According to Westchester Joint Water Works, the increase is due to two main reasons. The first one is that the Department of Environmental Protection has increased its rate by 9.9%. And the second one is due to the operating cost of the future debt services on capital improvement projects. After the representation of Westchester Joint Water Works, the town decided to have a 12% tax increase. Well, you don't need to buy water. You know, we have fabulous water uh, supply and the last large surface water supply probably in the world that's feeding such a huge population. So we're very lucky to have that and we want to make sure that it is, keeps in good working order. So I believe that, um, you know, the recommendation has been for a 12% increase in our water rate in the town of Mamaroneck. Would anyone like to make that motion? I'll make the motion. I make the motion that we adopt it for all readings, 12% for all readings after July 1st. Second. Please call the roll. Murphy. Aye. Elkindini. Aye. Katz. Aye. Odierna. Aye. Tillickson. Aye. Thank you. This tax increase is retroactive to July 1st, which means that on your water bill for August, this increase will be reflected. As always, you can log on to lmctv.org to have access to the full meeting.
Let's turn to Mike Witch to see what stories have been trending in the media this week. Joan Rivers Manhattan Digs just sold for a record $28 million, as reported in the Mamaroneck Daily Voice. Rivers lived in Archmont for several years. Her Upper East Side residence was her home for 25 years. The sale was reportedly the highest real estate price of the week, according to the New York Times. The Mamaroneck Daily Voice has more on that story. The Loop reports that Molly Spillanes is under fire from the Mamaroneck Village Zoning Board. The board wants to renew an order that would force Molly's to keep the noise level down during late night hours. The restaurant's owner claims that he's being singled out by the board. The board claims that Molly's has been responsible for more police calls, for fights, noise and other complaints than any other business in the village. For more information, read The Loop. An incidence of Lyme disease have soared 320% this week, so says the Center for Disease Control. As reported in the Daily Voice, it's the highest percentage ever recorded for Lyme disease. If it's caught soon, Lyme disease can be taken out. Symptoms are similar to a fever, and ring appears around the infected area. If left untreated, however, Lyme disease can kill, and quickly for some people. The Mamanic Daily Voice has the full story. A&P has filed for bankruptcy. It's reported by Loha.com that many of the stores shoppers are used to will likely be switching hands in the future. This comes after several shoppers are, quote, surprised that the stores lasted as long as they did. The store on Mamaroneck Avenue is described as looking for a new owner, while the one on Halstead Avenue in Harrison will become a key supermarket. For more information, visit Loha.com. And a recent survey has some shocking information about how much time teens are spending on social media. The report by NBC News finds that, quote, half of all teens are sending 50 messages a day, 3,300 texts a month. NBC News also states, quote, psychologists warn that these behaviors cause concentration, sleep, and critical face time to suffer. For more information, read the Mamaroneck Daily Voice. Well, those are just a few of the items that caught my eye this week in the local media. Thanks to local live reporter researcher Chris Pellegrini, I'm Mike Witch. Thanks, Mike. Did someone say trivia time? Let's see if you can guess the answer. Don't go anywhere because when we come back, we have Senator George Latimer answering your questions. Right now, I'm wondering if our guest knows the answer to that trivia question. Do you know the answer, George? I do not. No, well, neither do I, but you stay tuned right after our conversation tonight with Senator George Latimer. Thank you for coming back to our show. You've been here before, and you're always a welcome guest. Michael, thank you. Nice <clears throat> to be with you again. And uh, full disclosure, I voted for you, and I've contributed to your campaign, but tonight we want to talk about uh, Albany. Uh, they, mm -hmm. You are still in Albany, yes, a Senator? Well, I'm, I'm still there by mm -hmm. a position, but we're physically, as we have this conversation in July, out of legislative session. So I'm, mm -hmm. you know, here in the district, uh, you know, uh, five days a week, seven days a week. I think I read that one of your members uh, uh, said it's everybody couldn't wait to get out of Albany because of who's going to who's going to get uh, uh, hauled in by the uh, attorney general. It's been a bad year. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's no way to sugarcoat it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have the leader of the assembly and the leader of the Senate both uh, get indicted in, in serious indictments that, that look from a layman's standpoint as uh, persuasive indictments. And mm -hmm. we just had <clears throat> the uh, number two uh, Senate Republican uh, just convicted of a crime and he's lost his seat. Mm -hmm. We have a former uh, leader, uh, Democrat in the Senate, who's uh, any moment we expect a verdict to come back in mm -hmm. his case. And he looks like he's going to be convicted and lose his seat. It's a terrible moment. And, you know, I can certainly understand why people feel the way they do. I see it as I uh, interact with people, you know, they look at you with a jaundiced eye mm. because the, the guilt by association affects the, the full entity. Well, let, let me ask you, actually, we have a question that uh, a viewer already wrote in, yep. if I can get right to sure. it. Uh, this is about uh, Senator Tom, is it? Libis. Libis. Yep. Uh, what do you think? 
of, of the senator and uh, the status of his ongoing battle. Well, we know what happened. Well, he's been convicted. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what makes the, the situation for Senator Libis difficult is he is uh, dealing with um, a level of cancer that has been uh, assumed to be uh, terminal. Mm -hmm. And he may not, in fact, live long enough to ever serve time in prison. So uh, we're watching a person, you know, at, at a very severe part of his life, but also having to um, having to live up to what he's done. And, and he's been convicted of perjury, lying to an FBI official. He's lost his seat in the Senate. Very powerful guy. has been there a long time. The, I think the problem, and this is, you know, opinion, it's not fact written on tablets down from the top of Mount Zion. I think you've got two or three major problems that contribute to this climate in Albany and why you don't see the equivalent on the Mamaroneck or Larchmont Village boards or even in the county legislature. Number one, there's too much money in the system. Mm -hmm. There is campaign money that comes in, and it's a very uh, loosely uh, structured system. You can raise quite a bit of money through um, uh, limited liability corporations. Uh, you can, um, uh, you know, uh, document how the money is being spent. Mm -hmm but it is not necessarily tightened in a way that prevents it from being used for things that would benefit you personally. And that much money in, in this kind of a political climate uh, has become the source of the corruption. This is what both uh, Sheldon Silver and Dean Skelos have been mm -hmm. accused of doing, which is shaking down contributors to benefit their children as part of the process. Hmm. The second thing is you have too much power centralized in a couple of people. And uh, I, I think it's Richard you that said, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. If it's not him, then somebody will call in before the end of the segment we and hope. correct me. Mm -hmm. but, it, but it's a well-known statement, and I believe it's true. The more power you give to any individual without a check and a balance, the more likely it is they're going to abuse it. And now you're watching, frankly, decades of abuse mm -hmm. finally being caught by the prosecutor. And the third thing, and this isn't pretty, is that I don't think that the, the, uh, the population and the media pays enough attention to Albany. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a boring city. It's, uh, the, the issues are not as uh, sexy as discussing. When you're debating death penalty, abortion, marriage equality, those are exciting issues. You can get a conversation in the diners over a cup of coffee with anybody. But when you're talking about issues that relate to um, uh, how you write a bill, whether it benefits the trial lawyers or the insurance industry, yeah. it, it, it lacks public uh, interest mm -hmm. and therefore they operate in an area where money can flow with power and it can very easily lead to corruption. But it has to be cleaned up, Michael, and, and you know, I don't think we've done enough. I think it's pretty obvious. Well, actually, you've anticipated the question from uh, another viewer who wrote in, Amanda, who asked that very question. How did this happen? How does all this corruption happen? And how can it be prevented? Just well, well, it, uh, less I think, money? And, well, I think that there's certain things you can do legislatively. I think we can, we can reduce the amount of money that any contributor, mm -hmm. individual or corporation or union, can give to an individual candidate, and that will help a little bit. I think you close loopholes where you can have multiple donations from one entity, a real estate company that has separate LLCs and every LLC can contribute. Uh, I think you have to tighten the rules of how you can use the money uh, so that, that what is currently legal, the definition of that has narrowed down. But I'll tell you a statistic that, that also refers to the third bullet I've mentioned, which is the, the people paying attention to these things. We had last November, eight months ago, four individuals running in New York State for re-election to public office who were under indictment a Republican congressman from Staten Island, a Democratic assemblyman from Queens, a Democratic senator from uh, Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and Tom Libis, a Republican senator from uh, upstate. All four of them were under indictment. All four were easily reelected. Mm -hmm. And what it tells you is, is that the voters in those areas voted their party affiliation rather than punishing someone for an indictment. Now, you can certainly argue that an indictment is not a conviction, mm -hmm. but in three of the four cases that have been adjudicated, they've been found guilty or they copped a plea. So at some point in time, we need to put more structures in place, and individual people need to hold their electeds accountable for these things. And they're not. And it's a combination of those things that, that let this thing run rampant. Now, Preet Bharara is balancing the ledger here. And he's gone after a number of individuals, and he's caught them. And I don't take any joy in, in anybody's you know, embarrassment and sure. scandal. But at the end of the day, that may be the way this has to get cleaned up, case by case by case. Uh, I want to remind our viewers that we have this time with Senator Latimer, and it's also your time to call in or email or tweet your question or your comment, and uh, we'll ask it to the senator and, and see what he says. 
Um, what's your typical day like, may I ask? Let's well, get, get it, to if, that. If we assume that this time of the year, where, we, where yeah. uh, I'm here primarily in the district, my district offices are in Portchester. They were in Mamaroneck when I was an assemblyman, but I inherited the offices that State Senator Susie Oppenheimer, my predecessor, had. So I relocated to Portchester. I might start the day with a meeting anywhere in my district over breakfast. Now, my district goes from the eastern half of Yonkers, think Yonkers Raceway, McLean Avenue, mm -hmm. all the way up to Katona, think Caramore. Mm. That's the sweep of the district. So in prior years when my district in the county was Larchmont, Mamanic, and Rye, or as an assemblyman, New Rochelle, Larchmont, Mamanic, Rye, Portchester, now my district is 15 communities. So mm. today I did in fact have breakfast at the Mamanic Diner. Mm -hmm. the, the day before I had breakfast with somebody at the Eastchester Odyssey Diner where you try to catch up with somebody on an issue. <clears throat> Normally speaking, I will spend the middle of the day uh, either at a civic luncheon, one of the mm -hmm. Rotaries, Kiwanis, Lions type meetings, o oftentimes as a speaker, but sometimes just to visit and talk. Uh, I'll visit a senior citizen center, one or maybe two, and, mm -hmm. uh, and then in the, in the late morning, I'll take time to be in the field. In the afternoon, I'll be in the office and I'll deal with paperwork until about 536, and then the nighttime activities happen. <laughs> and you know, Mike, some of them are fun. You know, Don't you uh, get to go home and kick up and watch what? TV? What? No. That's why I can't answer the FX question. I'm trying to think of the last time I turned on, you know, cable television other than LNC. Thank but, you for uh, saying that. Thank yes. you. Caught, caught me just in time. <laughs> but, uh, but seriously, uh, you know, then in the evening there's a variety of activities. Now, the activity might be the Mamanic Avenue uh, block party of last right. Thursday night, which is mm -hmm. wonderful. It's a social event. And you walk up and down the avenue, say hello to people, and, it's, and, right. and people stop you if they have an issue they want to talk about. If not, it's a greeting. It's a nice thing. Mm -hmm. It might be a meeting of one of the local boards or commissions where there is a connective to mm -hmm. what we're doing. So, you know, the Mamanic Village Committee on the Environment or uh, the Larchmont Village Trustee Work Session where they're talking about state budget issues. And then you go in and you talk about those issues. So, so you'll have some nighttime meetings. And then usually it ends 9.30, quarter to 10. And when I say an average day, I would say, you know, that stem to stern type of thing is at least three of the days of a mm -hmm. week. And then there are times when you take, you know, you have a, a normal break mm -hmm. uh, to do something different, you know, go out and catch a baseball game or things of that nature. But if you want to do the job properly, you really need to interact with people all the time. And I've tried to do that over my career, and I think that's what's kept me fresh. And I think, frankly, mm -hmm. that's what people tell me that they appreciate mm -hmm. about my service. Yeah. There are uh, a dozen, dozens of issues that we could talk about on a state level, but I know that you've been especially proud of some bills that you've been able to get through that benefit the Marinick and Larchmont, Rhineck, and your district. Can you, well, you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, we'll mention a few of them. I mean, you know, uh, to, now to be, you know, candid, I'm, I'm in the state Senate uh, as a sophomore. This is my second term in the state Senate for all mm -hmm. the years that I've represented Larchmont and Mamaroneck in some capacity. In this capacity, I'm a junior member at age 61. And then suffice to add to that, I'm in the minority party. So the ability to achieve certain things are less... By a hair. Well, you know, no. a miss is as good as a mile. Yeah. So in this case, uh, the majority side of the aisle has discretionary access to resources, which the minority side of the aisle doesn't. Having said that, uh, you know, we deal with the local governments about the local issues that they care about and the legislation they need. Uh, this year, there were three bills uh, that Mamanic Village, uh, as a government, supported. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to pass in, in our house, and Steve Otis as the assemblyman, the position I used to have, passed in the assembly, a bill that allows for a residential parking permit program around the Mamanic train station. And uh, if, if you live around the Mermanic train station or work around the Mermanic mm -hmm. train station, there are people that come from far away that want to commute out of Mermanic, very nice, but then they park in a way that eliminates your ability to use the parking in front of your business or in front of your residence. And now that there are more residences around the train station than ever before, uh, it's become a problem. So we wanted to give, Mermanic Village wanted to have, and we wanted to give them the power to regulate that with a residential parking permit program. We got that passed. Bill hasn't been signed yet by the governor. In fact, none of these have. We also passed a, uh, a bill that allows the, the village to levy a, a bed fee, bed tax, mm -hmm. on the uh, facilities that rent rooms overnight. The motels. Now, right. Now, you mm -hmm. don't have in, in, in Mamaroneck Village the Ritz-Carlton Mamaroneck or the Holiday Inn Mamaroneck. You have two motels in two parts of the community. And that still probably represents thirty to $40,000 a year in revenue. Why is that important? Because that's revenue that doesn't have to come out of the property taxes. So in essence, we've assisted the village in being mm -hmm. able to restrain 
the growth of property taxes by giving them an alternate revenue. And by the way, that revenue stream has been available in White Plains, in New Rochelle, in Rye City, in Rye Brook. So Mermatic Village is only getting its fair opportunity, as is Harrison and a number of other communities. Has to still be signed by the governor. There was one bill that we passed uh, in, uh, in the Senate, but mm -hmm. it, it did not get through the Assembly. And there's a philosophical problem with Assembly staff on it. Uh, so uh, Steve and I both have worked on it very uh, closely, is to uh, allow the village to lower the speed limit on the Boston Post Road in front of the high school. Mm -hmm. It's a currently a 30 mile an hour speed limit. Now, we know driving past that at any point in time during the day, young people are walking across the street mid-block. There's a crosswalk, but in traffic light, but you know, people come and go. Mm -hmm. I did the same thing in high school. So, uh, and the reality is, is that going through a 30 miles an hour or going through a 20 miles an hour is a big, big difference in terms of saving a potential fatality or a tragedy. The, the limit, the speed limit doesn't enforce itself, mm -hmm. but the speed limit plus police enforcement, we believe would slow traffic down and that, that would be a good thing. And if it takes me an extra minute to go through the corridor from somewhere around the Homics uh, at Weaver mm -hmm. Street to get to uh, you know the other end of that para uh, probably Delancey or mm -hmm. you know yeah. Fenimore Road, you know slow down. But we couldn't get that one passed. But we did get the other two passed, and we think those are positive steps. In past years, we've done local bills for uh, Mamatic Town, which also mm -hmm. wanted a residential parking permit program around uh, the Larchmont train station, uh, and then and then you get to the revenue side where we were able to deliver. Uh, a certain amount of uh, state aid to the Mamaritic and the Rhinex school districts. Mm -hmm. uh, they're both considered wealthy districts, as is Rye City and Blind Brook and other ones. But uh, state resources along those lines are important. And then if you look at the sweep over time uh, that I've been in the state government between both positions, we were able to get funding to help fund the, uh, the turf field that was put in a few years ago at Mamaritic High School. Uh, we funded some of the improvements to the children's room in Larchmont Public Library. Uh, and so things of that nature have an added benefit. Are these called member items? Well, well they were originally structured as member items. Now they're not uh, directly uh, part of our ability to directly use our discretion to accomplish. We have to go through the executive branch. Now all roads lead through the governor's uh, you know, office. But uh, we're able to try very hard to get those things. And, and you know, I'll put a plug in. Steve Otis, the state assemblyman, uh, who has the position I did have, uh, is in the majority in the assembly. And mm -hmm. so he's given access to things that uh, are helpful. And, uh, you know, the, all of that contributes back. It is part of what Larchmont and Mamaritic sends to Albany in tax dollars, and some of it come back home for local purposes. Do you, uh, are you hopeful that the governor is going to sign those measures? I am, and at some point in time when uh, the bills are officially put on his desk for the clock to start ticking, we will reach out here in Mamaritic and ask different entities to write uh, in support of it, you know, mm -hmm. so whether it's the Chamber of Commerce in one case or uh, certainly the village officials, uh, perhaps the town officials, depending on the nature of the issue. Uh, we hope that they'll support that. We hope the governor will sign it. We, we, I don't see any reason why he wouldn't, but it's his discretion mm -hmm. as to what he chooses to do. We have a question that was uh, sent in ahead of time about the New York State Education Commissioner. There's a new commissioner who's been yes, appointed. Mary Ellen Ilium. And uh, the question is, um, what, uh, what, well, what do you think of, of that person, and what, if any, changes do you see coming? Well, I haven't had a chance to meet with her, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, she's just going through the shakedown crew's first month or two on the job. I, as she was announced either in May or June and probably has just started the job within the last month. So mm -hmm. you always want to give somebody the benefit of the doubt to get started and go forward. I have been very clear about my disagreements on some of the philosophies that have been advanced uh, by the State Education Department and uh, by the Executive Branch. I am not a fan of this uh, overemphasis on standardized testing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a fan of taking the test scores and judging kids just on that, or teachers just on that, or for that matter, getting into, for our local purposes, what Bob Shapps and the Mamatic School Board, or what Peter Mustick, Dr. Peter mm -hmm. Mustick, and the Rhinex School Board do in structuring uh, their education systems. We, as individuals, are voters, and we have the control over who sits on the school board. They appoint the superintendent. I don't like the octopus arm of the state coming in and saying, mm -hmm. we're going to make you change what you do, particularly when Ryan Neck and Mamaritic have very high uh, records of, of graduation rates, mm -hmm. kids going on to top-level schools, coming back after college and graduate school, very well accomplished. I mean, you know, I, I turn on the Oscars, and I watch Mamaritic kids, some of whom were in this studio, yes. uh, being nominated for, for national awards. So to me, why mess with it? Why, why break it? We have problems in ed public education, and, and they exist 
to the greatest extent in our urban poor environment, and we need to address that with both money and strategies. So not being a fan of some of the things we're mm -hmm. doing, and the commissioner is a supporter of that philosophy. So, you know, I've shared with her my disagreement, but so you try to find now where are there areas of agreement mm -hmm. that you can move forward. Uh, we do not have in, in this area, Larchmont, Mamarinic, or for that matter, or anywhere in the South Shore, uh, any school that has been determined to be a failing or struggling school. There is a philosophy for is, how is that... Is it uh, determined by the state? Yeah, it's determined by certain metrics, okay. uh, low graduation rates, and uh, you know, so on and mm -hmm. so forth, poverty indicators. But that is an issue elsewhere in my district. I have an, a couple of them in Yonkers, and although I don't represent Mount Vernon, I grew up in Mount Vernon, and Mount Vernon has a couple of those schools. So uh, her philosophies and how she's going to implement that mm -hmm. is an area that I've reached out to her to talk to her about. Um, is she open and receptive well, I mean, to sitting down with We're looking you? forward to a meeting. She's indicated she's willing to meet with me as an individual legislator. You know, in fairness, there's 213 legislators. Mm -hmm. and uh, like breakfast. It would take a long time <laughs> to get through each of us. But I am the ranking Democrat on the Education Committee, uh, and I've uh, tried very hard to be diligent on a wide range of these issues. Mm -hmm. And so my expectation is we'll meet, we'll talk, we'll share frankly her point of view. I, I'm not afraid to tell anybody what I think, and I'm not afraid to hear what they have to say in response, be it positive or negative. So I'm going to be hopeful. As I said in a vote on the new regions, this is a triumph of hope over experience. So I'm going to vote <laughs> hope over experience at mm -hmm. this point. Okay. Uh, common Core, no child left behind. You have... Uh, not a big fan. Of uh, either one. Yeah, no, not either one. And, and No Child Left Behind right now is being reevaluated at the federal level. No Child Left Behind, first of all, you know, my background was in sales and marketing in the private sector. I know a good slogan when I hear it. No Child Left Behind, who wants to leave a child behind? Yeah. It's like a kid mm -hmm. left in a bus, in the bus yard. You know, mm -hmm. he's a child left behind. How about mm -hmm. race to the top? Who doesn't want to mm -hmm. win a race mm -hmm. and be on the top? But the slogans haven't followed, in my judgment, the strategies that are needed. And in my sense, without being an educator, my sense of the strategies, and I've shared this on, you know, on air before here on um, Local Live, is that you create a set of metric evaluations in general. And those districts that have met those uh, metrics, and these districts have, you leave them alone. You let them do what they do well. And you focus your attention where you have difficulties. And most of the time, Michael, those difficulties track poverty. They track uh, the, 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 the many times urban, sometimes rural, mm -hmm. social problems that exist. And they exist a couple of towns down the line and in sections of other communities that are otherwise wealthy. That's where the problem is. That's where the attention needs to be placed and not rearranging all the deck chairs. So I think that's what No Child Left Behind and Race to the Top has done. Mm -hmm. It has taken <clears throat> theories and tried to apply them as a one-size-fits-all, and I just don't believe that's a practical point. Having said that, my point of view is not in the majority status right now. So I advocate, and I uh, will work with anybody on things, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm dubious that this is going to end up well, and whether I'm in office or not, I believe we're going to walk back all these changes at some point in time, mm -hmm. and someone is going to say, some future person is going to say, well, it was an experiment, but it didn't work. And yeah. in the meantime, our kids were subject to an experiment. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. Yeah. What about the uh, $15 minimum wage? And the governor actually appointed a, um, uh, a wage board, didn't he? To, he sort of bypassed you folks. Well, well there's a wage board uh, that, that can govern fast food employees. Right. And uh, that met, uh, as we're having this live taping today, met yesterday and did uh, come up with a strategy to scale up the minimum wage to fifteen dollars for fast food employees. Yeah. Now keep in mind right now we are at a general minimum wage of eight dollars and seventy five cents. That goes up by twenty five cents at the first of the year, December thirty first, goes up to nine dollars. And uh, we're talking about taking it from nine to fifteen. Mm -hmm. um, and scaled over some time. Um, yeah, six years I believe. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it only applies to one set of folks. I, I believe the minimum wage should be raised. I do think, and I know I have arguments sometimes with some of my friends in the business community, uh, they would prefer there not be a minimum wage at all, and they believe that labor should be priced at its relative value to the product. And I take the attitude that you certainly want to price labor, and I was in corporate mm -hmm. life and dealt with these issues, you want to price labor at what's affordable, but you need a rising tide to raise all boats. Yeah. And I would say that additional 
uh, money in the pocket of those people who are at the low end of the economic spectrum winds up being money that they spend almost immediately on unmet needs. And so the money winds up being recycled back in the society. Is $15 the right number? That might be higher than I think we want to see us go mm -hmm. to in the short term. But uh, we didn't have the chance to debate that. The, uh, the Senate majority, I don't want to be partisan, but if I have to be, I will. The Senate majority mm -hmm. uh, does not want to visit, revisit this issue. So the governor did what he could do within his executive authority, but the broad-based minimum wage has to be negotiated between the two parties. And next year is an election year at the state level. I'm not sure if we'll see progress, because the folks that don't want to see an increase in minimum wage will prevail upon their supporters to hold the line. Yeah. There's a question that came in earlier, and this might be our last question because we're running out of time. Yeah, I apologize. For about, the, um, about Westchester County and the affordable housing. Uh, the, there was an article in the paper today about it being where, uh, the uh, uh, gentleman who's in charge of overseeing that uh, has proposed fines for the county. Yeah. Uh, you have any reaction to that? Well, you know, the state is not a direct partner in this. Mm -hmm. there, there is a, a couple of areas <clears throat> where the state is involved because the state is always a party to any affordable housing projects that come in. Some of our direct money and, and, and uh, loan uh, guarantees or, or tax credits are part of the mm -hmm. package that puts a project together. The thing to keep in mind is when, when we look at Westchester County being under the gun, they're under the gun because some of Westchester's municipalities have not done their fair share. Here's an interesting reality, though. Mamaroneck Village has more than done its fair share, and it can point to a number of projects, the Washingtonville housing projects, mm -hmm. uh, projects that have been done over an extended period of time. Uh, Mamaroneck Town, uh, with Homics Park Apartments, that's over 20 years ago, was a major step in that direction. There is pressure to try to identify more opportunities along those lines. Larchmont has an affordable housing project that's mm -hmm. under construction as we see it right now. And then places like New Rochelle, Port Chester, White Plains, Mount Vernon were never part of the original objection. So the objection from the federal government to Westchester County is that Westchester County hasn't done enough to push those municipalities that have not done their fair share. North Salem, Lewisboro, Yorktown, mm -hmm. Somers, a lot of northern Westchester communities, Mount Pleasant. In some of those communities, uh, because they do have more open land than, say, Larchmont does. Yeah. They have the land, but they don't have the, the political will. The, the voters and the elected officials of those communities don't want to move forward on affordable housing for any number of reasons, some ideological, some may be infrastructure reasons. Some of these places don't have sewers, don't have bus lines. But the argument, I think, has become more symbolic argument. And, you know, mm -hmm. Rob Astorino as county executive has made his point, and it's a philosophical point that he's fighting with the Obama administration. And I think it's become sort of a, a conservative, liberal, you know, dialogue. It winds up on Fox News as well mm -hmm. as local live news. Uh, so to me, I'm, I've, my whole career, I've been the kind of person to sit down and let's see if we can work this out. Resolve it. Resolve it on principles we can agree with, but let's not make it histrionic and let's not fight it out in a street battle. Uh, whether we can get that to Westchester or not is it's really out of my hands being at the state level. If we can play as a state a cooperative role, then I'm happy to do that. And I'm happy to say that Mermatic Village, Larchmont Village are doing what they can do mm -hmm. to not be part of the problem. Okay. Uh, last question. Yeah. You're going to meet the Pope when he comes in September? I'd love to. I don't know that that's going to happen, but it would be, uh, mm -hmm. it would be a wonderful thing for me to do. I am Roman Catholic. And uh, it would be an honor to meet him. And, and I, you know, I, I look at this particular pope as a breath of fresh air. He, uh, he comes out of the, the traditions of the church, but yeah. he has also opened some windows. And there's some fresh breeze flowing through. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some number of us, I'm sure there's some Catholics not happy with what he's saying, but there's a number of us who are happy with what he's saying. And I don't think it's a major departure uh, from, uh, you know, the theology. I'm no theologian. Mm -hmm. But but I think it is an opportunity to look back. He, he has put emphasis on the way we treat the poor. He's put emphasis on the environment as being part of something that, you know, from, from that theology uh, should be looked at. And those are wonderful things for my purposes to hear. But, you know, if I had a chance to meet him, mm -hmm. I'd love to do that. What would you ask him? What would you tell him? Uh, well, I'd probably get a couple of seconds. <laughs> I, I would say keep on keeping on. Good. Well, on that note, uh, we'll end this discussion. Thank you so much for... Uh, being with us again, My pleasure. and you're welcome to come back anytime you want. Thank you, Michael. Uh, and now stay tuned for more of The Local Live coming up right after this. You're watching The Local Live. The only news show on Larchmont and Mamaroneck on LMC TV.
Village of Amerinick's summer block parties kicked off on July 16th. Let's join Shayla Navarro to watch the highlights from last Thursday. It's Thursday, July 16th, and we are here at Amerinick Avenue celebrating the first Amerinick block party. So stay with us and have fun. Music, food, fun, and games for people of all ages was offered at the first Mamaroneck block party of the year. This event was organized by the Village of Mamaroneck Recreation Department to support local businesses and bring the community together. Mayor Rosenblum and Trustee Santoro shared their excitement about the event and invite us to the next block party. Absolutely great. What a fantastic night. It's as good as the weather. It's uh, well chosen, well predicted. This is another indication why the Village of Maronic is and remains number one in New York State. All you have to do is just talk to everybody that's coming up and down the avenue. Uh, residents, non-residents, everybody's having a great time. They look forward to the seven year. They come on the 13th and you can uh, talk to Mayor. Different local organizations and new businesses came to promote their efforts and their services that they offer to the community. To help target one neighbor to help make every neighbor green. We want to save energy, help people rehab their homes, and help have no more floods. Hi, we are a new yoga studio in the Marinette. Um, and we have a beach yoga class on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. So you should join us. The inspiration behind Green Life was we wanted to bring a healthy alternative to the Marinette Avenue. It's time to party, and this is how we rock it. Now let's turn to Kat Galliano to learn more about Made, a new art studio in Mamaroneck. Mamaroneck is known for great shops and restaurants, but there's a new business in town that's letting the artistic side of you hang out. On Friday, July 17th, the new arts and crafts store Made, short for My Art and Design, had its grand opening on Boston Post Road. I think what sets us apart from other art studios in the area and all over the country is our focus on experiential learning. It's not just about making a pretty project and taking it home. It's about developing your creativity and your skills and building on that each time you come back. What makes MADE unique? We had the chance to speak with owner Jamie Lynn about the different opportunities available for customers. When they leave, I want them to feel like they're inspired to continue being creative. Um, and it's not just in this space, it's out there in the world, in Mamaroneck. Um, I think that art is a thing that brings a community together. We got to see the crafting in action and learn about what the design experience is like. And today's the first day, the grand opening, so I want to see what your experience is thus far. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's been really fun and it's great to get out and be creative, you know? I saw about it like on Facebook and then I told Elizabeth about it because she likes artwork and stuff. So then, yeah, so then we just brought them too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you turned it into a ladies day. That's a part is that we are really focused on building community in the area. And for example, every Tuesday night we'll be having adult nights, which are, um, you know, just a chance for adults to gather in this space um, to kind of get a breather and take a, a, a break from, you know, your everyday hustle and bustle and hang out and talk to other people who are interested in similar projects. There are hundreds of projects to choose from, including paint your own pottery, canvas painting, mosaics, fused glass, birthday parties, and much more. I'll also be offering different techniques uh, on, on pottery, as well as pottery wheel classes, wet clay classes, hand building, um, for both for adults and children uh, and you can look online on my website for a calendar of events and workshops that will be held in here. Make sure you stop by Made so you can come make some art that you can cherish with you forever. This is Kat Galliano for The Local Live. Loretta is a five-month-old Lab Shepherd mix. This pup loves kids and other dogs and is currently learning to be housebroken. Come cuddle and play. 
visit ny-petrescue.org. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of The Local Live. It's been a pleasure, as always, to keep you updated with your community news. Don't forget to check out our website for more news and community programming at www.lmctv.org. And for internships and volunteer opportunities, please write us at thelocallive at lmctv.org. That's the news for today. I'm Marcella Milder. See you next week. Tell us what you think. In person, over the phone, online. Watch and hear yourself on TV. You tell us, we air it. This is The Local Live.